Hello and welcome. It's San Diego attorney Mark Blaine, practicing law here in California. And today I wanted to present with some information that you might find helpful and insightful for your personal injury case. Uh, I'm gonna go over some of the tactics that the insurance company uses, the tactical legal maneuvers to devalue your case. And make no mistake, when you have a personal injury case or claim filed in California, it's just like going to war against the insurance companies. Uh, you know, I like to say that Carl von Clausewitz, he once said that war is nothing but the continuation of policy or politics by other means. And when you have your personal injury case in California, it's no different. You have a goal, which is your policy to win your case through other means, which is the court system. So having said that, I wanted to kind of go through some of the tactics that they're going to employ on your case and how you're going to need to maneuver in order to be successful. So we'll just start. So the number one thing that they're going to do, and they do this on every case, is they're going to try to deny your case or claim. And they do this because they want to defeat it from the very onset. You know, if you have an enemy attacking, if you can eliminate the enemy, there, there is no war. So what they're going to do is look to see if they can uh, decline coverage. They're going to say, oh, the policy laps. Let's look to see if the policy laps on the person that injured you. And so that's one analysis that they're going to do. The second thing they're going to do, so they're going to do no coverage analysis, right? Then they're going to do is, uh, hey, were you partly at fault for your own case? For example, in California, we have comparative fault. So if you're in a car crash and you're partly at fault, the defense can assert that you might be 50%, 75% at fault or less or more. So that's another thing that they're going to do to try to deny a portion of your claim. And that's another tactical strategy that they're going to employ. You're going to need a good lawyer who's got trial experience or has been in war uh, to defeat anything that they're doing on these uh, items that we're going to go through today. Now, the third thing in that same denial analysis, if you go into a lawsuit, they're going to try to file a demur. Now, a demur is just a fancy legal word that says, hey, you might have filed a complaint in your lawsuit with facts that are true, but nonetheless, they're insufficient to substantiate your injury case. And again, you're going to need to have a good commander, trial lawyer with trial experience or war experience to know how to defeat that. And that's called a demur. And then the fourth thing within denial, they're going to do, and this happens sometimes as well, is a summary judgment motion. Now, this doesn't happen a whole lot in like a car crash case, but I had it happen on a ladder case where a guy fell and they're trying to defeat uh, whether or not the defendant, the wrongdoer, uh, did, did or did not have a duty to make that ladder safe. And so what the summary judgment does, it, it gives the judge an opportunity to sum, summarily dismiss a cause of action or the entire suit based on some legal foundation. And in that example, it would be a duty, negligence, was it there or was it not? And this is dangerous because if it does get denied or if the judge grants it, you can't go forward in your case to trial. So again, you're going to need another experienced trial lawyer. You're going to need a trial lawyer on your case that has experience with this in order to defeat it. So that's number one. Number two, they're going to delay. Insurance company, we all know the insurance companies are working for their bottom line. And so if they can delay your claim without paying you right away, well, that doesn't benefit you, it benefits them. And what they do is they keep the money in a separate trust fund so they can make profits on it. So the longer they can keep your claim from being settled, the more money they're making. And we don't want that. So again, you want to have an experienced trial lawyer who's been to, through this a few times to know when they're doing that and when they're not employing that type of uh, defense tactic. The other thing they're going to do is they're going to say, hey, so I'll put right here, not paying because they're delaying, and then gap in medical care. They're going to say, was there a delay in medical care? Why is that important? Well, if they can say that you didn't go to medical care right away or you went right away, but there was a gap in care during your care, they can make the argument later at trial that you weren't that injured. So that's another way they're going to employ this delay tactic to try to def defend or de devalue your case. So you've got to be aware of that. The other thing they're going to do is, and they love this, when it gets to the defense lawyer, when there's a defense lawyer on part, they'll try to continue the trial date. 
Now we know our own, the own defense research, research suggests that the longer they do this, it really gets worse for them. But again, this goes to the same premise as before. If they can continue the trial date, they're keeping those money, that money in trust for themselves so they don't have to pay out your claim. Now, I don't let this, I don't take this lightly when I get a motion to continue the trial date. It's gotta be for good cause. And if it's not good cause, the judge won't grant it anyway. So be aware of that as well. Number three, insurance company is going to defend. Okay, what does that mean? Well, just like in land warfare, when you're attacking a fortified enemy who knows you're coming, that's one of the most disadvantages, disadvantaged ways to proceed forward against the enemy. Just like here, they're gonna do it on your case. They know you're coming, you're gonna go on their ground because you're trying to get the value for your case. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna counterpunch. That's what they are, that's what they do. They throw mud up on the wall and see what will stick. So they'll say, like we talked about earlier, was there a gap in medical care? You weren't that injured. There wasn't a lot of damage to the car. Look at the photographs. It doesn't show much damage, but yet you had a surgery. This is all mudslinging, we call it. And it goes into the defend strategy tactic that these defense lawyers are trained to do. And by the way, these insurance companies hire smart people. These are smart defense lawyers who go to war all the time doing this. So again, you wanna make sure you have a good commander, good trial lawyer that knows, that has war experience that can know when this is being uh, employed on your case. Because when it's, if you don't know it's coming, then it's a lot worse for you. Uh, underneath defend, we already talked about the fortified position because you're trying to get the value for your case. Um, I always say 50% of the job for a defense lawyer is just showing up. Meaning when you're at trial and that defense lawyer shows up, his or her job is 50% done. The jury's gonna focus now on the counter argument that's gonna happen. So, they're gonna, so this, this all goes in that strategy to defend. Uh, and then number four, they're gonna deceive. Now, Sun Tzu said all war is deception. Uh, and that's false maneuvers, uh, feigned attacks, pretty much everything we summarized so far in one through three. Uh, and, and one of the things I, I find really unique with that element is that they, they will, uh, just like in D-Day, they used deception when they were invading Normandy. There were dummy tanks, there were plastic paratroopers, they were trying to deceive the enemy on when, they were, when and where they were gonna attack the Normandy coast. Same thing with uh, your trial, with your, your personal injury case. One of the things they like to do is called, before trial, they'll stipulate to fault, or what they call liability. Now, liability is a three-pronged process, and what they'll do is they'll tell the judge, hey judge, we, we, admit, we admit fault on your case, on this case, okay? We're, we, uh, we, caused, we, we understand that our insured was the wrongdoer, and so we're gonna admit fault. We're good guys. And the reason why they wanna do that, and it's usually right before trial, is because they wanna come across as being repentant. And what does that mean? Well, when you're being repentant, there's three prongs to that. It's really, when you commit a wrong, you want to make up for it. You have to make up for what you did wrong to someone. That's our rules in society. So when someone says or does something that is wrong and causes you harm and injury, they first have to recognize that they were wrong, admit fault, which is what they're doing here with that proposal. But then there's a second prong, and that's really to apologize. And then number three, make it right. So when they stipulate or say they're admitting fault, they're not going to also apologize and they're not also going to make it right and that's deceptive so this is a really big deception that they're going to employ on your case and they'll do it on the eve of trial and I tell the judge look the, the defense can stipulate to fault all day long I'm not going to do that I'm not going to they can agree that they were at fault but I'm not going to stipulate to fault because that requires an agreement between the defense and myself. And the reason why I do that is because I wanna bring in the wrong act. 
I want to bring the facts of the wrongdoing to the jury so they can understand and appreciate the safety rule that was violated. Because without that, you don't have that foundation and context for the jury to make a reasonable inference on the harms and losses. And that's why they do it. So they try to say to the jury, oh, we admitted fault, but they, they leave out this two, these two elements. And my job as a trial lawyer is to explain to the jury that they left that out. You know, my client never got an apology and he was never made right. So why are we here? So that, that's the thing that I wanted to point out on that deceptive maneuver that the defense does. Now, all of this, the uh, deny, delay, defend, deceive, uh, all goes under to what's called the fog of war, or what Karl von Clausewitz calls the fog of war. And that's important because the fog of war is really just a fancy way of saying, or creative way of saying confusion. They want to confuse the issues so it makes it harder for the jury to get to the truth. They want to recede in darkness. They don't want to proceed in the light. They want to, they want to do the deceptive maneuvers on your case and let that be done. Now, that not only causes uh, confusion, but they also want to focus on you. Did you get medical care right away? How much are your medical bills? Are you asking for too much? But it really shouldn't be focused on you. The focus should be on the wrongdoer, the person that created the the harm to you, whether it's a car crash, slip and fall, dog bite, whatever it is, the focus, and that's my job. I put the focus on the defend, defendant's conduct. And that's why when they stipulate the fault, I want to bring in the wrongful act. There's a deterrence effect there when the jury hears about what, what happened. And that's important for society to know. The community has an interest in making sure that that's what is known. So we want to focus on the rule breaker not you. So uh, now, this might, you might be asking yourself, well, why am I giving, sharing this insightful information? Well, could be that you're going through a struggle right now. You got an injury claim or a, you're with a lawyer right now and you don't know, you have some questions. You know, you want to ask your commander, which is your trial lawyer, who, who's about to go to war, hey, do you know all about this? I'm concerned about this. Maybe, uh, you know, if they, if they admit fault, how does that affect me? As, what is our strategy if we go to trial with that? These are questions you can ask your lawyer, or if you don't have a lawyer, you can, uh, you can call me and ask me. I'll make myself available. I do this every day. Uh, so you want to also find out if your lawyer is a diplomat or a warrior. Has he been to trial? Has she not been to trial? Or is she just doing diplomacy all the time and, and selling your case in peace talks? That's important as well. You know, Flavius once said, famous Ro Roman writer, he said, if you want peace, you must prepare for war. And you got to do it on your injury case because you only have one shot to do it right. You only get one chance and you want a fair fight. We all want a fair fight and we all want this to be done the way it should be done. So again, I make myself available to you if you have questions or if you want to reach out to me and uh, be more than happy to take your call or email. All right, with that said, stay strong and have a great day.